Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, the second lecture is, uh, um, is anemia. And by definition, anemia is uh, a reduction below normal of the hemoglobin concentration. Okay. Um, the hemoglobin normally in a male is 13.5 gram so to actually to 15.5 so if it is reduced below 13.5 this may indicate anemia or if the hematocrit is below 41 percent as you know the hemoglobin normally is lower for a female so a hemoglobin below 12 and a hematocrit below 36 in a female indicates anemia um, um, when we talk about the hemoglobin we don't talk about the absolute amount of hemoglobin in a human body we talk about the concentration of a hemoglobin in a given volume of blood so obviously for this reason if the patient is dehydrated, i.e. the patient has lost fluid, water, mainly water, then the hemoglobin will be high. The hemoglobin will be higher. If the patient is overhydrated, then the hemoglobin will be lower. Okay? And for the, sa for the same reason, the hemoglobin will be lower in a pregnant woman because in a pregnant woman, the blood volume is a 25 to 40% more than normal in the second and third trimester of pregnancy. Okay, this is an important a clinical point. Okay, um, so if a patient loses blood acutely, i.e. a car accident or any accident, and the patient loses blood, then the hemoglobin will not change. The hemoglobin will start going down only after you correct the volume of the blood by giving intravenous normal saline, or if the patient starts drinking fluid to correct the volume, so the hemoglobin will go down. Okay? Um, yes. What are the causes of anemia? These are the main three causes of anemia. Decreased red blood cell production. Um, the blood cells are produced, as you know, in the bone marrow. So a disease affecting the bone marrow, okay, uh, can cause anemia. And we will talk later probably for factors which can or diseases which can affect the bone marrow increased red blood destruction again can cause anemia you uh, probably you all know that normally an rbc the red blood corpuscle lives for about 100 to 120 days okay so each day there is a turnover in our body of our red blood corpuscles by one percent if this is increased okay we don't call this hemolysis because this is physiological but if a 20 percent of our blood is of rbc's is, is destroyed in one day then this is hemolytic anemia and this is red blood destruction okay the third cause is red blood cell loss um, a, a blood loss from a human uh, body can occur from many organs, mainly in males from the gastrointestinal tract, okay, because a patient can lose um, one or two units or more than this, probably two liters of blood from a bleeding duodenal ulcer without seeing fresh blood, okay. Um, while if a patient coughs a little bit of blood 
then this is very annoying to the patient and immediately he will uh, rush himself to uh, uh, to a doctor um, for a female a blood loss occurs mainly from the gastrointestinal uh, from the um, from the uterus okay in a female a plus of course the gastrointestinal tract but a female mainly from the uterus if the female is in the reproductive period of life then it's a pregnancy abortions etc if it is menopausal then it could be bleeding due to uterine disease we will go to next slide um, what are the causes of decreased rbc production okay we said that red blood corpuscles are produced in the bone marrow okay so the bone marrow actually is the factory of blood the bone marrow to synthesize the blood needs iron folic acid and b12 and these are common causes these are common causes it needs um, other uh, substances it needs um, for example thyroxine uh, so thyroxine deficiency can cause but these are the main ones uh, the bone marrow can get infiltrated with malignant diseases say multiple myeloma infiltrating the bone marrow in a female commonly breast carcinoma can metastasize to the bone marrow okay uh, myeloid dysplasia is a condition which can affect the bone marrow as well and all these ultimately will lead to anemia the bone marrow can be suppressed by chemotherapy and uh, radiation okay chemotherapy and radiation often used and the treatment of malignant diseases but they will suppress the bone marrow either temporarily or permanently okay um, erythropoietin is a hormone uh, produced by the kidneys and it controls the production of the rbcs by the bone marrow so in a chronic kidney disease erythropoietin may get deficient and anemia will result thyroid hormone i have mentioned this and uh, androgens in a male androgen deficiency again may be associated with uh, anemia due to low production of rbcs uh, rbc destruction red blood cells destruction i said earlier that um, the red blood cell lives for about 100 to 120 days okay um, but a condition called hemolytic anemia um, um, can cause a rapid destruction of the red blood corpuscles autoimmune hemolytic anemia it could be idiopathic it could occur in the course of uh, leukemias and lymphomas okay dic malaria all these are um, there are inherited causes inherited causes for uh, which uh, uh, cause early rbc destruction this is like congenital spherocytosis sickle cell disease thalassemia all these are inherited and they are associated with a shortened uh, lifespan of the RBCs, so they cause anemia. Um, red blood loss, we mentioned this bleeding. Bleeding may be obvious. Say, uh, following an accident, there is an injury and the patient is bleeding. This is uh, obvious, but often the bleeding may be occult. And occult bleeding uh, is more important to. Uh, to recognize and treat um, and i'll give you examples of this a patient um, can bleed from the gastrointestinal tract as i said earlier okay without noticing anything so you have to be 
you have to be very alert for this. And if you see a man, an old man or an old woman with anemia, ask about the drugs which can cause bleeding from the gastrointestinal tract and ask about the color of the stool. Not all of them will be able to tell you the color of the stool because they may be blind. They may not look into, uh, um, uh, into the lavatory uh, um, after defecation, okay? Uh, but a, a blood uh, in this stool can show itself in two forms, either as a fresh red blood or as melina. Melina is dark, loose, shiny, tarry stool. Okay? Um, um, melina um, often refers to bleeding from the upper gastrointestinal tract and fresh bleeding from the lower gastrointestinal tract, but actually it's not upper and lower, it depends all on the time the blood take until it reaches the outside. So if a patient bleeds from a, a duodenal ulcer, then initially it will be melina, but if the bleeding is severe, then blood is irritant, and it will, it will cause intestinal hurry, okay? So fresh blood will start coming out of the rectum. On the other hand, a bleeding from the lower gastrointestinal tract, say carcinoma of the, of the lower colon, if the patient is constipated and the blood will remain for some time in the colon, then it will pass as melina, okay? The other possible occult blood is retroperitoneal, is bleeding in the retroperitoneal space. This can occur following blunt trauma to the abdomen, and sometimes it occur with pancreatitis or other condition. So, because the retroperitoneal space doesn't show. Actually, in surgery, a fracture of the femur, you know, the femur is a long bone. It, if, if it, if it, uh, uh, if it fractures, um, then it may injure a vessel without an external wound. And then you will, if you examine the patient carefully, you will see that the thigh from the posterior aspect is big in comparison to the other thigh, which is normal, okay? This is occult bleeding in the thigh, okay? These are important. You have to be aware for these possibilities. Okay, now let us talk about uh, the reticulocytes. The reticulocytes are um, red blood precursors. And uh, normally they replenish um, the lost RBCs. If you remember, I did say earlier that an RBC will live for 100 to 120 days, okay? And these are replaced by a new RBCs. The new RBCs will be a nucleated RBC and a nucleated RBC is called a reticulocyte and uh, it is bigger in size than a mature RBC. By the, by the way, the RBC has no nucleus in it. A mature RBC has no nucleus in it. So what is the normal reticulocyte count? you should answer me that the normal should be 0.8 to 1%. Because if you take that the RBC span, life span is 120 days, then the reticulocyte count should be 0.8%. If the RBC span, life span is 100 days, then the reticulocyte uh, count normally is 1%. Is this clear? Should be clear. Okay, um, this is important. This is important uh, because if a patient is, is bleeding for any reason and the bone uh, is anemic for any reason and the bone marrow is normal, the bone marrow will produce more reticulocytes. Okay, so with anemia, a high reticulocyte count 
indicates an appropriate response from the bone marrow. But if the patient is anemic and the reticulocyte count is low, this indicates that the bone marrow is not responding appropriately. This means that the bone marrow itself may be diseased. Okay, this is uh, a slide to demonstrate the relationship between the reticulocyte count and the degree of anemia. And often the lab will tell you whether this is appropriate response or inappropriate response. Okay, and this will direct you for the, to further your investigations for anemia. Okay, if you believe that the anemia is due to, if the bone marrow is responding appropriately, then it could be deficiency anemia, like iron deficiency, folic acid deficiency, B12, and these are usually easy to treat. Or if it is due to bleeding, then the patient may need a blood transfusion, okay? Um, if, the, if the response of the bone marrow is inappropriate, i.e. Um, the bone marrow is not responding, to the reticulocyte is probably 1% or 0.8% and the anemia is severe, then you have to investigate the bone marrow itself by doing um, uh, a bone marrow aspirate, a bone marrow biopsy, and by looking to the erythropoietin as well. Okay, uh, how do we approach um, a case of anemia? Okay, um, actually there is a standard investigation in the lab called CBC and CBC means complete blood count or complete blood picture, it's the same. Okay, here what you see, you will see the hemoglobin, you will see the other indices for the RBC, you will see the white blood cell count and you see the platelet count. So I myself, how do I do this? And I recommend that you follow this system. Look to, first of all, to the hemoglobin. If the hemoglobin is low, look to the white cell count. If the white cell count is normal and the platelet count is normal, then the problem is in the RBCs, in the RBCs only. If the white blood cell is very high and the hemoglobin is low, this could be acute leukemia, acute or chronic leukemia, okay? If the white blood cell is low, the hemoglobin is low, and the platelet is low, then this is hypoplastic or aplastic anemia, okay? So this is a very good way of looking into the complete blood picture. Now, let's assume that the hemoglobin is low, the white cell is normal, the platelet is normal. Immediately after that, I look to the MCV, okay? The MCV is the main corpuscular volume, okay? And this be either of the three, either normal, we call it normocytic, means normal in size, or a smaller in size, we call it microcytic, or bigger in size, I mean the RBC is bigger in size, and this is macrocytic. So here, familiarize yourself with these three terms, normocytic, microcytic, macrocytic, okay? Here is on the right side of the slide, look into it carefully, is the differential diagnosis of, of these three causes, okay? What do, me, what do I mean by uh, microcytic? I mean that the MCV is below 80. If the MCV is below 80, then this is microcytosis. The normal MCV is 80 to 100. If it is above 100, then this is macrocytosis, okay? Um, iron deficiency is probably the commonest cause of anemia 
and it causes microcytosis. Actually, iron deficiency anemia is usually microcytic hypochromic. And the first thing to go wrong in iron deficiency is that the RBC size will go smaller, microcytosis. And if this does not com compensate for the degree of anemia, then hypochromia will occur, i.e. the hemoglobin in a given RBC will go down, so the picture will be microcytic hypochromic anemia. Okay. Um, macrocytic anemia, the commonest causes of it is folic acid deficiency and B12 deficiency. There are other causes, but these are the commonest. Normocytic anemia can occur early in bleeding, and it can occur with chronic inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, etc. Okay. Um, this slide uh, um, will show you um, the microcytic anemia. And this is the differential diagnosis of microcytic anemia. I did say earlier that iron deficiency is the commonest cause of microcytic anemia, but is not the only cause. The second cause is thalassemia. Thalassemia is an inherited disease. It is common in the Middle East and it's common in Africa. It's extreme, extremely rare among Europeans. Okay. Sidroblastic anemia is another cause of microcytic anemia. And these, uh, the arrows here pointing to these blue rings, the sidroblasts. Now, uh, let's discuss iron deficiency anemia. Okay. Um, um, you will get suggestion that the anemia is iron deficiency uh, is iron deficiency anemia if the picture is microcytic hypochromic, i.e., low hemoglobin, MCV below 80, and uh, MCHC is low as well. Okay, this is microcytic hypochromic anemia. But the definitive, uh, the definitive test is the serum ferritin. Okay, the serum ferritin is a very useful uh, investigation uh, for iron deficiency. Usually, a low serum ferritin indicates iron deficiency. A normal serum uh, ferritin indicates a normal iron status and a high ferritin indicates iron overload, but there are exceptions, okay? Ferritin is, uh, um, is an albumin, and uh, uh, it's an acute phase uh, reaction, so it may go high with, uh, with many diseases. One of these diseases is the COVID-19, okay? Actually, it was found that it's quite a good investigation um, uh, to alert you to the possibility of COVID-19, okay? But generally speaking, if the, uh, and of course, it can go up with rheumatoid arthritis with many inflammatory conditions, but if the patient hasn't got any of these and the serum ferritin is low, then this is iron deficiency, okay? The other investigation um, to know about uh, iron status is the serum iron and the total iron binding capacity, TIBC. These two investigations should be done together. You should not look to them separately. Normally, the serum iron is one third of the TIBC, okay? So the total iron binding capacity normally is one third saturated. In the states of iron deficiency, the serum iron go down, the TIBC goes up. So the relation between the TIBC and the serum iron will not be one to three, it will be probably one to five or one to six or one to eight. Is this clear? In the states of iron overload, the serum iron will go up and the total iron binding capacity will go down. 
So the relation instead of being one to three, maybe one to two or one to, to 1.5. Is this clear? Okay. So this is uh, the way you should read the serum iron and uh, the TIBC. Okay. Um, other uh, associate finding with iron deficiency are anisocytosis and poikilocytosis. N isocytosis, N means none. Iso means cell, I mean size. Cytosis cell. So it means inequality in the size of the RBC, i.e. an iron deficiency you will see on a blood film that some of the RBCs are small, some are a little bigger, some are spindle shaped, etc. While in another condition which causes microcytosis like thalassemia, this doesn't occur. Okay, and there is a test for this. We will come to it later. Okay, reactive thrombocytosis means thrombocytosis means a high platelet count. This occurs with iron deficiency. Okay, so this will give you a clue for iron deficiency, but I remind you again that you shouldn't treat as iron deficiency unless you get a low ferritin. The ferritin is the most important investigation um, for iron deficiency. This is a blood film. This is a blood film of uh, microcytic hypochromic anemia and this is iron deficiency you see this is this is hypochromia you see the rbc center is very pale indicates hypochromia the rbcs are small in size you see smaller in size they should be normally it should be this size this is a white blood cell okay and you see that the rbcs are of different shapes look to this one look to this one look to this one look to this one so this is an isocytosis okay this does not occur with thalassemia now macrocytic anemia macrocytic anemia when the mcv is above 100 okay this could be due to drugs drug induced hydroxyurea, um, methotrexate, most of the chemotherapeutic agents can cause this and they are commonly used. Ask your pay if the patient being treated in Al Hussein Cancer Center, then most probably um, his anemia is due to one of these. The other causes are B12 and folate deficiency. Okay. And you should know, you should remember your, the physiology from your physiology, the um, iron metabolism, B12 metabolism, and folic acid metabolism. Okay, again, these are common questions um, in the exam. Myeloid plastic syndrome is another cause. You will have this on a separate lecture or seminar, is another cause of macrocytic anemia. Liver disease, liver disease by itself is associated with macrocytic anemia but if the liver disease is induced by alcohol and as you all probably know that alcohol is the uh, commonest drug to cause liver cirrhosis and the chronic liver disease then macrocytosis occur actually macrocytosis occurs with alcoholism before liver before the patient develops liver disease and when, so the MCV will go up. And when liver disease develops, the MCV will go even higher. Reticulocytosis in, this, in, the, in the setting of hemolytic anemia, yes. Um, if the patient develops hemolytic anemia, then the bone marrow will compensate by producing uh, 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 more reticulocytes than normal. This condition is called reticulocytosis. And if you remember, I did tell you early, earlier that reticulocytes are immature. 
RBCs. They have a nucleus and they are bigger than a normal RBC. So if they are bigger than a normal RBC and they, their count is big in the peripheral blood, then the MCV will go up. Is this clear? Should be yes. Okay. Sporious called, uh, causes like called agglutinins. Folate and B12. Okay. Um, um, uh, the, the body stores of, uh, of folate is usually not very big. Okay. And if, if a patient goes off his diet, for a few weeks, three or four weeks, he may go um, folate deficient, and folate can be measured in the serum, okay? And um, you remember, as I said earlier, folate and B12 anemia, def deficiency anemia, are usually macrocytic anemias, okay? Um, folic acid deficiency can develop as a side effect of many drugs as well. They can affect uh, like anti-epileptic uh, drugs, okay? They can cause, um, uh, interfere with the metabolism of folic acid. Um, B12 deficiency is not rare actually, and it is to be recognized. This is very important. B12 deficiency um, can manifest itself as macrocytic hypochromic anemia, but it, uh, B12 deficiency can manifest itself as a neurological deficit as well. Peripheral neuropathy or uh, 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 signs related to the posterior column. You know the posterior column and the spinal cord, if you re remember your anatomy, this convey the sensation of half the touch, joint position sense, and vibration sense. So if joint position sense is lost due to B12 deficiency, then the patient will be ataxic, will have a toxic gait. Um, uh, you should remember B12 deficiency. B12 is, uh, is taken usually from the diet, and uh, the diet which is rich on B12 is usually meat and liver, or to animal meat and animal liver. Remember here that animals and the plants does not produce B12. B12 is produced only by bacteria. Many bacteria like the E. coli, even the, the E. coli which are present in, normally in a human colon uh, can uh, produce B12. But a human being cannot absorb his own B12 because the B12 is produced in the colon while the B12 is absorbed in the terminal ileum. Okay, so all the B12 which is produced in the human colon will be excreted in the feces. It will be taken by insects and the insects will be taken by animals. And then the, uh, this, uh, this is the way B12 uh, circulates in the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, normally, okay? B12, as I said uh, earlier, is stored in the liver. And um, um, there is at least, uh, at least three milligrams of B12 in a normal liver. And if you take the daily requirement of B12 to be uh, probably four to seven microgram per day, okay? Um, then a patient can go for two or three years without B12 before developing B12 deficiency, okay? Um, uh, uh, let me again remind you of the absorption uh, quickly of B12. You take B12, as I said, by, by food, it will go to the stomach. In the stomach, it will get combined with intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is secreted by the stomach. Then it will pass down the small bowel, and this B12 intrinsic factor complex will be absorbed in the terminal ileum. Okay, so a disease in the stomach or a disease in the terminal ileum or a deficient diet can cause B12 deficiency. Okay, um, this is the picture of. Uh, 
of anemia, of macrocytic anemia, you can see that the RBCs here are, uh, are bigger uh, in size. And very often you have uh, uh, a hypersegmented, you see this segment, a hypersegmented neutrophil. This is commonly occurs with the macrocytic anemia. Now, normocytic anemia. Again, normocytic anemia means a low hemoglobin, but an MCV, which is with the normal limit. Okay, this can occur with, uh, uh, with the complicated group of dis disorders. It can occur with hemolytic anemias, with anemia of a chronic disease, with bone marrow dis uh, uh, disorders, and with anemia of renal insufficiency. Okay, because I did uh, say that uh, the kidneys secrete a hormone which, uh, which controls the production of RBCs from the bone marrow. This hormone is called erythropoietin. So deficiency of erythropoietin can cause uh, this type of anemia. Treatment of anemia. Uh, um, the treatment actually, whether you transfuse or not, most anemias does not require blood transfusion, okay, if they are chronic. But if the anemia is due to acute blood loss, then definitely the patient will need a blood transfusion, okay. If the, um, if the anemia is due to iron, iron deficiency, then supplement iron, okay? If it is due to B12 deficiency or folic acid deficiency, give uh, uh, this a treatment. If uh, the anemia is due to erythropoietin deficiency, like in chronic renal failure, again, this can be co uh, corrected by erythropoietin. It's available uh, as injections. Okay, um, you have to remember on supplementing iron and on supplementing uh, folic acid and B12 is not only to correct the anemia, but to restore the, the blood stores. Actually, normally there is at least six grams of iron in a human body. 0.5 gram to one gram is circulating in the blood and the rest is stored in the bone marrow. So if you, if you supplement iron deficiency anemia, you will need probably three to four weeks to correct the anemia, three to four weeks of treatment with the oral iron to correct the anemia, and probably three additional months to restore uh, the body storage, okay? And uh, the, said, uh, the same is said about, about B12. Thank you very much.